Greetings, I'm Alia Bonner-Ill, and thank you for tuning in to The Conscious Party Show. That. You don't worship the ancestors, you worship God, but you venerate them and you keep them close. Basically, you keep the same relationship you had when they were living, because they still are. They've been freed from the body. And because they're freed from the body, they got more power to help you now than they did before. White people venerate their ancestors all the time. Every building in Philly got the name of a crack on it. They venerate Christopher Columbus every year. They know he ain't discover a damn thing, but he's going to be venerated. Am I wrong? They got them devils on the dollar bills. They got them everywhere. Everywhere you look, white folks is venerating their ancestors. When I go to China, how much you want to bet they venerating their ancestors? When I go to Japan, how much you want to bet they venerating their ancestors? Why we don't venerate ours? Church and the mosque say you ain't supposed to. There's a lot about spirituality that in the Bible and the Quran you got to know that. You've been around two million years. You've been around two million years. You don't let a religion that only been around two thousand tell you what to do. I'm gonna say that again. You are two million years old. You don't let a religion that's only two thousand years old tell you how to act. You can take the good from it, but you also got to say, okay, I'll feel you, but I'm still gonna deal with my culture. And that's what I love about Africa, because when I'm in Senegal, my African Muslim friends, I can make salat with them, and we can still get a spiritual divination right after the salat. You do that in America, stop for a while. Stop! Brother Shaitan! You see that? Because in Africa, even with the religion, they never give up their culture. Because that's what the white man did. He took away your culture, gave you a religion. We, been, we got culture. We know how to act, how to think, how to solve problems. We got two million years of African culture. You're going to throw that out and reduce everything you do to what Muhammad said, and everything Muhammad said ain't even been recorded. So I got to run around looking for hadith to tell me how to do X, Y, and Z when I got two million years. I'm not knocking a religion. I was raised in it. I love it, but I understand it has limitations. And whatever you do, if you got a white Jesus in your house, please burn it tonight. <laughs> Black people love white folks. I go, I go in houses. I do therapy, right? I always look for the white Jesus. And guess what? We still got him up. This is 2017, and we still got that Jesus up there. And then some of us take the white Jesus down and go get the metrosexual black one, the light skinned Jesus with the red lipstick, no shirt on. Look like he owes it like Prince or something. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Look real effeminate, long eyelashes. Look like he's winking at you. <laughs> Consciousness, commitment, consistency, courage, and the last C, y'all, is creativity. What are you doing for black folks? And I'm going to end on this. In the black consciousness community that I guess I belong to, right? My biggest problem with black consciousness is most of my young brothers who are in this movement with me, the ones y'all see YouTubing all day long, ain't putting in no work for the people except information dissemination. Did y'all hear what I said? Listen, we the smartest group of black folks ever. Do you know that? No group of Africans had the knowledge at their disposal that we have since our fall from greatness, okay, since our fall from greatness. No group of Africans had the knowledge we have today. So why are we still in the problems we in them? You want to know why? Because they were wise. They knew the information was to be put to action. Right, right, right. We're not wise. Now the information is simply to know it mm -hmm. so you can look smarter than the next African. Yeah. And then you debate the next African to prove to the world that you're smarter than him. Y'all see, that's the new gangbang. Mm -hmm. It's intellectual gangbanging now. You see? Mm -hmm. So your generation got to put the work back into it. What was our most progressive century out of slavery? 1800s. Eighteen hundred to eighteen ninety nine. I want you to study that century. Eighteen hundred to eighteen ninety nine was the most progressive century black folks had since we left, since we uh, fell from greatness in Africa. Eighteen hundred to eighteen, not nineteen hundred to nineteen ninety nine. Uh uh. Eighteen hundred. That's the birth of Garvey, Elijah Muhammad. You get out of slavery, Pan-Africanism, 
Haitian Revolution, Shaka Zulu, Menelik II, I can keep on going, Harriet Tubman, just about all of our great leaders, the, the main movers, were born in or made their contributions from 1800 to 1899. They didn't know everything you know about Kennedy. They don't know everything you know about diet. They don't know everything you know about history and culture, but they did more from 1800 to 1899 since. Elders in the UNIA used to say, people keep talking about Negro. We need to change the name of the Universal Negro Improvement Association to the Universal African Improvement Association. And the elders said, we ain't changing it. And I said, why y'all not changing it? Elder, we need to let people know we African. We ain't Negro. We understand Garvey used Negro because that's what black folks identify with. The day they identify with black, same thing as Negro, an adjective. And you know what they said? The reason we ain't changing the name is because black folks did more under the Negro. Mm. Mm. Black folks did more under Negro than they ever did under black or African American. Did y'all hear that? It don't make the name appropriate, but I understood why they didn't change it. And then the elders stood up and they challenged all the young people. They said, show me what y'all did under the word black. And we'll show you what we did under Negro. And what we did under Negro was great. The black churches was under Negro. What the hell have African Americans done? You're the African hyphen American? We ain't done nothing but, but gangster rap. You see? So it's not what you call yourself. And never get in debates about what we should call ourselves. Don't, don't get into that. That ain't nothing but an intellectual masturbation track. Because we got a lot of intellectual masturbators. They just want to sit around masturbating information. Do you know this? Who know that? Did you know this? King Tut. Nah, nah, nah. Don't get involved in that. When people ask me, what should we call God? I say, whatever you want to call God. Allah, Jehovah, Amen Ra, Kanum. Olo Dumade, whatever you want to use, use. They say, why, Doc? I say, I'll tell you why. Names are only for the purposes of reference. That's it. If all of us brothers and sisters, we got the same mom, you might call mom big money. You might call mommy. You might say mother. You might call her by her first name. I might call her son. No, we all say mama. Different names. Because the name got to resonate with your spirit. So I don't care what you want to call God. God is so incomprehensible, there is no one name. Mm -hmm. right. Which takes me to the next issue. What should we call ourselves? Mm -hmm. Are we Africans? Are we Moors? Are we Negroes? Are we Hebrews? Are we aliens? I say the same thing. Whatever you want to call us is fine with me because if God ain't got one name and we God's first people, we ain't got one name either. So I'm going to be Hebrew, I'm going to be more, I'm going to be Nawapian, I'm going to be whatever you got, and still some more. Don't get involved in those games with people, y'all. Stay out of the debates and stay out of the arguments. You are all about what? Work. So let me give you an example. A Garveyite sits down, a Moor, a Nawapian, a Hebrew, a nation of Islam, a God and earth, everybody. Everybody going to tell you what they believe, right? And you know the pet African is we believe all African people are what? One people. And we identify as Africans before we identify as anything else. We also believe what? That the problems in America cannot be solved unless we unite with Africans globally. We believe our solution is an international solution. But getting back to my point, after you heard all of us out, we might all make sense to you. You say, what the Moors are saying is true. What the Pan-Africanists are saying is true. What the Nation of Islam is saying is true. What the Hebrews are saying is true. What the God and Earth is saying is true. What the Socialists are saying is true. What the Sarah said is saying is true. Everybody right with the philosophy. So you say, Dr. Uma, how do I decide who I should work with? You know how you decide on it? What is their agenda and plan of action? Mm -hmm. Philosophy is one thing. Work is something else. Mm -hmm. Don't let the philosophy space you out so much that you forgot to evaluate the work. Let me give an example. I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Conscious Party. We like to feed your mind and spirit and have fun doing it. The person.